Let's hit the checklist, shall we? Yoshi's Island? Check. Super Metroid? Check. Donkey Kong Country? Check. Super Mario freaking everything? Checkity check yourself before you wreckity wreck yourself. This game owes so much to other ones, the bank should take its house away. Now usually, when I say a game doesn't have an identity of its own, I mean it as a criticism. It's unoriginal, it's contrived, been there, done that, say it however you want, it's never a compliment. But in this case, it works. Wario Land Shake It takes a little from column A and a lot from column B, but the thing is, it mixes them together just right. And one of the reasons it works is because that's all it's supposed to do. Wario Land is an old-school Nintendo game from 1994 that just happened to be released 14 years later. The game's identity is, in fact, its perceived lack of an identity. It's a tribute album to all the classics that came before it, and it plays out just how you'd expect. And that's the point. <laughs> But of course, while the game is at least functionally familiar, it actually does make a statement of its own in terms of its presentation. Shake It was developed by the same studio that would go on to make Kirby's Epic Yarn, which is one of the most gorgeous games ever released for the Wii. And given Wario Land, that should have come as no surprise. This game's hand-drawn art style looks absolutely fantastic. But you know, perhaps fittingly, a drawback of the presentation is that the gameplay is presented in 4x3, ensuring 1994's gameplay is paired with 1994's presentation. And with just five worlds of five levels apiece, there isn't a whole lot to this game in terms of content either, but it achieves exactly what it sets out to. Wario Land is like Nintendo's greatest hits condensed into a short, simple and stylish Wii game. If you're a fan of the past, that's all it needs to be. Wah, Wario.